Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be creating baby prints centerpieces. Now I'm on Inkscape. Why? Because I want to create a shadow for this particular image. This image, my machine will try and cut every strand of hair. This is quick. It's simple. It's easy. Don't worry about all these buttons. We're not going to use all these buttons all around Inkscape. So don't worry. Let's get to it. And you'll see it's pretty easy. Let's go to File. Click on Open so you can bring it in from your download or your desktop. Don't know what's going on. I'm even not going to pay no mind to that. Go to your download wherever you have your, your image. I have it on my downloads. Click on the folder and let's bring it in. We're going to drag it in here. Once that comes out, let me delete this folder right here. Okay, and click on link. It's already on link and click OK. Should bring your image, which is right here. Now we need to create the shadow. Follow these steps to create the shadow. Let's go ahead with the image selected. We click on path, trace bitmap. We need to trace this image, which is right here. Now I leave mine as 0.996 on all of my these type of images. The rest remains the same. If you want to go higher, some images, yes, you can go higher and some you cannot, like this one. You cannot go higher because look what happens. It creates that black box. We don't need the black box. We need the shadow. Let's bring it back to 996. Again, update, okay, and we can X out of it. Let's bring it in right here. Let me zoom in can see it better okay I need this a little bit wider you see it's the same image right here just we just traced it I need it wider in order to do it a little bit wider we're gonna go ahead and click on path click on outset you can go back and forth with the outset or you can go with the shortcut I'm on a Mac if you notice, when I click on Outset, this window will disappear. But I just want you to see it right here on this side, how it widens. There you go. And if you want a little bit wider, you can put it a little bit wider. I'll do a little bit wider. Now, you see these little white dots right here? I have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six little dots. Six little dots. If you leave those, those dots... When you go to design space, the machine will cut out those little dots. It, go, it will cut out those little dots. We don't need that there. Click on the image. Go to your left-hand side where it says nodes, this little image right here. And we're going to delete it. You highlight it and then delete. We highlight, delete. Let me go back. Okay, we got it. Now, let's go ahead and delete this one. Go back to this one. Go to File, Save As. You can change your name. Disregard this part. I have to check on Inkscape, see what's going on. You can type in Shadow. To save it, you can do a plain, SV, a plain SVG or the other one is the Inkscape SVG. Leave it on Plain, SVG, Minimize, on design space, upload, click on upload, upload, let's bring in the image right here, drag it into your design space, this is your shadow, you can change your name, you can place the tags as shadow if you prefer, click on save, Click on this image and then we're going to go to images and we're going to bring in the original image. Baby prints. And I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to click on uploaded. And he's all the way down here. Wait, where is he? Oh, that's not him. Hmm. Where's my blue? Let me see under what name. Yeah, I have it in the baby prints. Let me go back up. 
Did I miss it? Oh, right here. Click on your image. You'll see it in the bottom of the screen, insert image. Let's go ahead and size it four and six, and we're going to lock it. Go back to the upload. Click on your shadow, insert images. I think I didn't click on insert image before. And let's size it to four and six. Well, I'm going to size it 4.1, 6.1. Goodness. If that happens, just click on cancel. And we lock it. Let's go ahead and change the color of our canvas. Go down here where it says blank canvas. Click on that white box. Go up here. Click on color. And let's do like a rose. Click on the image. In between line type and fill, click on that black box, which identifies the image you just clicked on. White. Take your image and we drag it on top. If that happens, click on arrange. Move it to the front and we're going to go ahead and place them right in here. There you go. With your outline. Highlight entire image. Attach and flatten. I'm going to unflatten. I'm going to detach so I can show you something. You see right here on your right hand side, your layers panel, you have the cut and print and you have the cut and print, which is your shadow. We need that. If you have this like this and you click on make it, it'll go ahead and print this one and then you're going to head and print this one. We want them together. That's why I highlighted both images, attach them and then you flatten. Look at your layers panel again and you have a cut and print. You have to adjust it. Let me unflatten. I just wanted to show you guys how it's how it comes out. Okay. You adjust it to your liking right there. Yeah, right there. Highlight again, attach, flatten. Let's get the size. You can leave the size 4.14 4 or 6.1 or whichever size you'll be using. I'm using a four six, no difference. Okay. Click on make it. And we need two centerpieces. Since we need two centerpieces, I'm gonna click on two here. Click on a well, well, sorry guys. Let's cancel and go back. I forgot something. Before you click on make it, you have to select the machine you'll be using. So go up here and click on where it says maker. I'm using the, well, I'll be using the maker. Yes. If not, if you only have one machine, explore. I'm using the maker because I forgot I have another project on this, on this side. Now we click on make it. We need two centerpieces. I'm just going to click on two and click on apply. Why? Because this centerpiece is double-sided. We get the second print, click on mirror. You need to mirror your image because when it's double-sided, you need to mirror it. If you don't mirror, once you place it behind this one, you'll have a blank side. Go back to the front. You'll see eight and a half by 11 letter. It only fits there. It won't fit two of them. Hopefully Cricut will change that one of these days. I use 65 pound white cardstock. You need this black box around your image. That's called the registration mark. If you don't see this registration mark around your image when it's a print and cut, there's something wrong with your design space. Because there's no button for you to go and turn it off and on or change it or do whatever. You cannot do that. You can only move your image, example, to the side if you want, to the bottom, that side or that side. You do that if you have multiple images, like maybe a size two, two by two, and you can go ahead and rearrange all your images. But for this one, leave it right there. Like I said, you need this registration mark in order for your machine to recognize what it will be cutting. Let's click on continue. From here, you'll see the machine you selected in the previous screen. It says maker. Well, that finishes. Send to printer. This was the part where we were able 
to click on here and it, it used to say uh, save as PDF if I'm not mistaken and then for the Mac user you were able to click see I'm clicking and drag it to your desktop you can no longer do that to add the shadow now add bleed remains the same copy since it's two center pieces I'm gonna click on copy you select your printer that you'll be using and then we're gonna go ahead and let me feed my printer once you print it'll come out just the same way you see it here with that black box let's go ahead and click on print Okay, while that prints, what I do is go down here, send to printer, we already have your printer, select to, add bleed is on, and we're going to click on print. So that first sheet came out, grab that first sheet, you're going to stick it onto your mat. Go back to the, be careful if you're printing out the first one, make sure that that's the one you're sticking onto your mat. You're going to go back, click on it, and you're going to select whatever material you're using. These are my favorites. So I'm using a 65 pound cardstock. So I'm going to choose a 60 pound. Default remains the same. If you want more, it's the pressure or less pressure. When it's an intricate cut, I use less pressure for our machine won't be going crazy but I'll just leave it in default now you load your tools you should have your blade in your machine and then we're gonna go ahead and load the mat to the machine once it's loaded it'll give you an option if you want fast mode I will do the fast mode why one is not an intricate cut two I have the white outline once you do that, you go back to your machine and you're going to press your flash and go button. Once that finishes, you go ahead and click on the flash and button, release, take out your mat, take out your cutout, and then you go to the next one. Once you cut, you print and cut all of your images, I'll see you back at the table so we can start assembling. Okay, now that we're back at the table, we have the cutouts. You see the outline. We have our piece of floor foam. Three by four base. What I did was I painted it on both sides with acrylic gold paint. I have a four inch lollipop stick, which I cut it in half. And I have my two by two boxes I already glued the inside. Okay, what I do is I take the box, fold it, and then I glue, put some glue in here, and then I'll close it. Now, for this one, this is the top box. For the top box, what I do is cut the sides a little bit so it we'll, won't interfere with the floral foam. Next, I take my hole puncher and I'll just go all the way in and punch it here Make a hole. then I'll take my floral foam and I'm going to glue it on to the back okay we can set it aside to dry okay and I have the letters I already have my letters cut. What it is, anytime I have an order, I'll just pre-cut letters and I store them in here. So let's grab the name. Since it's double-sided, I'll grab all the letters. And I decided to add a crown at the bottom to make it a little bit taller. 
So basically the crown is just a 1.5 by 1.5. You can get any crown or any embellishment. It doesn't have to be a crown. If you like the crown, you can find the crown in Design Space. And you can go ahead and cut it with the same glittered cardstock. Okay, next, let's go ahead and grab our boxes. For the boxes, you start gluing on the boxes until you stack them up all together. Just apply generous amount of glue right in the bottom of the box and glue it on. Do not glue on the last box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start stacking them up Now let's go ahead, let's set that aside and let's go ahead and grab the image, grab the piece of stick. And we're going to add the glue. Where's my, oh, you guys can see it. Okay, right here. I'm just going to go ahead and add glue and then add the stick right in the middle from the bottom up. And just leave a little piece coming out so we can then stick it into the top box next we're going to go ahead and grab the other side place it on top measure first before adding the glue and then what I'm going to do is apply glue all over in the inside Okay, there's a piece. And then next, we're going to go ahead and grab the tower. And we're going to add, well, what I like to do is just add the hole first. Pinch it in. And then we can go ahead and try it first. And then we can glue it on. Let me see if you guys can see it. It's just the upper right there. And then what I'm going to do now is wait for it to dry. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add. Sorry about that, guys. Start adding the letters front part and the back part. Okay, I got the crown first. Just add the glue right here and then add the letters. Okay, once you're done with that one, you just go ahead and place your cutout right at the top. See if you guys can see it. I'll do the back in a minute. Okay, center pieces are done. This is the one I had ready made, and it's on both sides, front and back. 
thank you for watching. Thank you all for your support. And as usual, happy crafting.